you're listening to This Week in Property. Stay current, relevant and up to date in the world of property investment. Learn from the UK's leading property professionals and grow your property business. Hello and welcome to This Week in Property. I'm your host Richard Swan and I have just had the privilege of talking with five fantastic people about all things property. Now here at PMW, our flagship course is the Property Protégé course and it all starts with a very, very intensive four-day event. And the five people I've been speaking to have just been on that course. I've picked them out of the group of people who were all there studying and it's only a couple of days after they've been on the course that it's all fresh in their mind and I wanted to do a debrief with them. I wanted to get behind their story so that you can understand who they are and how they might relate to you as a listener that follows a podcast. Uh, Some people who are accidental landlords, some people who have just came from a completely different career and want to do more in property. A whole host of different backgrounds, different locations, different reasons of why they're wanting to do well in the world of property and property investing. So it was great to hear that backstory. And of course, what is it going forward? What's their mission? What's their path? What's their journey? Because as we know, the world of property is massive. There are so many different areas, strategies, tactics, etc. that you can be involved in. And everyone's got different ideas and different desires and different goals and different targets. So we go in about it. It was a very wide-ranging conversation all about the course and how they found it and the different elements involved, who they are as as people, as I say, from where they are with their background, their careers, their stories, and where they are going forward. And that all-important question that sometimes we forget to ask, the why. Why are they involved in property? Why are they interested in it? Why, when we've all got just 24 hours a day, why are they looking to do that to raise their business to to be a success, to try and help themselves and other people in their lives? So without further ado, let's get in about the Protégé Debrief. So what we'll do first is we will go around the houses. Janet, I'm going to come to yourself first because I want the listeners to understand who I'm chatting with today. We've got a great wee group with us today. Uh, and before we go into our conversations and see where we are and what we're up to, let's have a quick check in with who we're going to hear on the show. What's your kind of summary, your background, career, whatever you will, uh, and what's brought you to this stage of doing your property journey? So Janet, over to yourself. Richard, hello. Good to chat to you this evening. Um, yeah, so I'm, you can probably tell from the accent, I'm based in Northern Ireland. I um, live about 30 miles from Belfast um, and have done for quite a number of years. Um, my background really has been um, based in corporate companies, working in telecoms and laterally sort of software sales. And really what was sort of happening to me was it's a quite a, progressive, volatile industry. And um, I was in situations whereby companies were being bought over, people were being made redundant, etc. cetera. Um, and really there wasn't an awful lot of security there. Um, so I really had to sit down and have a bit of a think to myself. Um, the last time that I was made redundant at the, the sort of the tail end of last year, and try and understand, was I happy to give people that degree of power over my future and where I was going? And the simple answer was no. And I started to investigate um, different routes and avenues into property. It's been something that I've been interested in for a while. Um, I became an accidental landlord already. Um, And that was more or less by sort of chance rather than design. And... It was something that had really piqued my interest and it was, I suppose, um, a couple of connections with Paul and LinkedIn, um, Paul McFadden, that had really sort of got me thinking and it was something that was kind of trickling along in the background and the more I exposed myself to it, 
um, it was something that I kind of thought, okay, I'm, I'm interested to kind of listen a little bit more and was ready to see where I could go on the journey in property. That's fantastic, Janet. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate that. Simon, over to yourself. We've got a, a, a certain twang in the accent over with you as well, <laughs> uh, but you're not actually based there. So uh, tell us your story. Yeah, good evening, Richard. So, um, yeah, as you can probably tell, I'm from Ireland, but I have been living in London for the last five years. Uh, pretty interesting, I suppose, and kind of a crisscrossed and weird and wonderful way I found myself to where I am. Uh, I left school when I was 16 and went straight into a trade. I started doing electrical services engineering back in Ireland, which is essentially building distribution panels for large sites and designing them and building them and then bringing them onto site and uh, putting them on and, and doing all the BMS stuff as well, sort of building management systems, all the networks and everything, which was really interesting. But then 2008 happened and the whole thing just imploded. So I was, uh, I would have been very early 20s at that stage and found myself in a situation where I was about to be qualified in this trade I'd spent four years in. But, you know, the whole future was looking pretty bleak. So I went back and got into a state-sponsored business management course, which lasted a year. And it was nine to five, Monday to Friday, very intense. And we had people who were kind of corporate lawyers with large firms, people who were builders, tradesmen, uh, people from just office jobs, public, private sectors, a big mishmash of different people. Uh, but it got me pretty much involved with the kind of business side, business management and finance. Uh, then after doing that, I came to the UK uh, and found myself getting a job as a business broker within M&A, within wealth management, essentially doing what a deal packager does in our industry now, where you find a seller and find a buyer, match the two and structure the deal. But this was with people who were looking to sell their company and people who were looking to buy companies. So I went in as an analyst, entry level, worked my way up to senior associate within about three years. Uh, and then was recruited by one of our clients to work in their M&A team here in London uh, and pretty much work for them exclusively. So I've been doing that for the last two years. So about five years in total, I've been working on that. But obviously having a construction background, uh, I've been involved in that. I've always had an interest in property and it's something that I've wanted to do. Came across Paul on LinkedIn a couple of months ago and just resonated with his message, everything he was saying, very genuine guy, knew his stuff, and I just felt I had a lot to learn from him, him and the team. Decided to enroll in Protégé, went through the course there at the weekend, and yeah, here we are now. So it's been a pretty, pretty whirlwind couple of weeks, but uh, yeah, it's a fantastic experience so far. That's brilliant. Yes, we're going to be digging into your protege experience. This is our debrief session. Uh, yeah. Call it a therapy and counselling, perhaps. <laughs> well needed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that. <laughs> There's a lot to unfold there, that's for sure. And Martin, we have you with us this evening as well. So let the listeners know who are you, whereabouts in the country are you, uh, what kind of background and career have you had yourself as well? Uh, hi, Richard. Yeah, yes, my name is Martin Cassley. Um, I live in Scotland, uh, actually live in Glasgow, uh, not too far away from where the course was held. Uh, I live in a place called East Kilbride. Um, I've lived in Scotland now for about 15 years. Um, during that time, um, I studied in accounts and finance uh, for a couple of years, uh, got a HMD uh, in that. Um, from there, then I moved on to um, working in finance and putting my, my skills that I've been taught to good use. Um, so I've worked for payroll bureaus, um, I've worked for HMRC, um, and I'm currently working for a shared services company. Um, I look after the payroll side of the business. Um, so that's uh, the UK employees, uh, employees that work in Ireland, uh, and I do do some Europe uh, payroll as well. So in uh, Abu Dhabi, um, Poland, uh, Belgium, Germany, quite a number of places really. Holland as well uh, is another mm -hmm. one. Um, so yeah, so um, uh, that, that's something I've, I've done for a good while now, just 10 plus years. Um, I've always had a, a passion for property, however. Um, had a, a passion for it since I was a little boy really, um, but started to get more serious about it probably over the last sort of five to 10 years where I've been looking into things and trying to get my foot, uh, you know, dip my foot into the water, if you like, uh, so to speak. Um, but I've, I've came across a few obstacles, um, one being know-how and certainly another being finance. Um, so when I discovered Paul, 
um, and the course that he was offering, it seemed to get further education on how to get involved in property and, and move forward from there. So, and, and it didn't let me down in the slightest. Um, it's been overwhelming, really, and uh, a good insight. Ah, don't tell them, don't tell them. <laughs> Keep it a mystery. <laughs> Keep it a mystery. <laughs> Who knows? We might get through all these introductions and then we'll say, oh, it was terrible. I hated it. <laughs> I, I was never going to say what I was, I was never going to say what I enjoyed yet. <laughs> that was too early. <laughs> good man, good man. That's fantastic. So, from Martin over to, uh, or back to another a lovely young lady on the call, we have Kerry with us. So, Kerry before we get to conversations about how you got on with the course and what you're up to, what's the background of Kerry? Where has she come from? What's her career and so on? Okay, so um, Kerry was born and bred in Leicestershire. Um, <laughs> left school at 15 with not an awful lot of exams or anything. Um, took a YTS in hairdressing. Yeah. Completed that and then got married quite young and started having my family quite young. Um, ultimately, I now have six children. The eldest one being 28, the youngest one being nine. Um, and I got into the care industry through my mum being ill. So I spent quite a few years um, in the care industry. And through that, I took a degree in mental health. And I was with Booper as a regional director for the past five years until at the end of 2017 when I took redundancy. And it was while I took redundancy, I had a couple of minutes couple of months garden leave and I started looking on the internet a little bit and I came across Billy and I found it really inspirational and the entrepreneur side and I'm just thinking there's so much more that I could be doing. Mm. In the interim I did take another job at the same level, a regional position with another healthcare company um, but after meeting with Billy, uh, so I started to listen to Billy, that kind of linked me into Paul and I kind of just got the bug for the property and, and the bigger picture. And, you know, it doesn't have to be up and down the motorway every day. It doesn't have to be nine hmm. to five. It doesn't matter that I started with nothing. You know, it, there's, there's a way forward. It doesn't matter where you are. So, yeah, so I signed up for, for Protégé and um, it was an absolutely amazing experience. Um, and I'm already... No, oh, 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 don't, don't awesome. tell them, don't tell them. I know there's exciting stuff going on with you. I thought you were about to let the cat out of the bag there. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep these listeners in suspense. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. fantastic, Kerry. Absolutely brilliant. And our last friend on the call tonight, our David. Now, David has a unique story we're going to unpack uh, as we have a conversation because he's actually done Protégé for the second time we're going to go into. But before all of that, who is David? Where is he? What's his background and why on earth did he get connected with the world of property? Over to yourself, David. Richard, how you doing? Um, so for myself, I'm from Glasgow. Um, pretty much stayed here my whole life. Um, moved in various places. I'm well travelled in the city of Glasgow. Um, my background, my career and stuff is, is mostly um, engineering. Kind of based, started off as a apprentice welder um, and blacksmith, and then moved on from there. And then nothing. Um, my career path went down the railway for so for the last seven years. Um, I've been pretty much full time in the railway. Um, I enjoy my career, definitely enjoy it, but it's mm -hmm. very very taxing on the body i.e. the shift patterns and stuff. So the actual job itself is fine, but it's the shift patterns, that, a lot of night shift, a lot of back shift, just a regular sleeping patterns and stuff like that. It can be really difficult and taxing, especially if you've got a young family and stuff like that. It can be really, really difficult um, to manage. So that's kind of, I've always, that pretty much, they will be the same story as everybody. It's always the same in it. Watched um, Homes Under the Hammer when I was younger. Always a keen interest. Never thought it was the right time. Was trying to save up money. And then, funnily enough, I know somebody who was on Protégé. Um, so that was the kind of route I spoke to her about getting involved as like, a, an investor. And right. transpires, I went down a different route and end up with yourself and Paul and stuff like that. So 
<laughs> and that was my second time. That was my second time on Protégé, so... Yes, and we're going to get you to explain why you would have done that and what kind of benefits you found from it because it was, it was fascinating chatting to you throughout the whole event uh, and seeing that, seeing that difference because you were the, the one person there, big group, fantastic people, but you were someone who had been there before, you'd, your eyes had seen it and it, it, was, it was fascinating understanding exactly how you were finding it and what the experience it was. Uh, so we're definitely going to unpack that one. Now, let's, what we'll do is jump back to Simon. For yourself, Simon, there was a there was two words you just kept saying to me all the way through, Protege, and it was mind blowing, mind yeah. blowing. I thought this man doesn't <laughs> want to talk to me. He doesn't, he doesn't want to spark up a conversation. He just keeps saying these two words over and over again. I couldn't <laughs> find anything else to say. <laughs> you found it quite an intense experience, didn't you? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, I know Billy asked the question. You know, did people get what they came for? Mm. And pretty much from the first couple of sessions onwards, everything was just a step on step on step on top of it, you know, from the previous session. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there was a couple of sessions in particular. I know we had Leslie speak and that just, yeah, totally blew me away. Not only his story and what he's done, but just the vision, you know, and and how he's managed to bring it together in such a short space of time. Yes. And when you see those real world examples and, you know, you see someone who's just putting in the work, understands what he needs to do. And if he doesn't, he'll find the answers and then just implement it. It was, yeah, it was really, really mind blowing, you know. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's a great point, actually. And for the listeners, uh, so that was Leslie, Asante and Tony, who's actually been a guest on the podcast already. A couple of weeks back, we had him on. uh, Yeah, I listened to it yesterday, actually. Oh, did you? Yeah. I had missed that one, so I went back and listened to it again. Yeah, yeah, but you talk, you really thought you got the the inspiration from it, the encouragement from it. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic, that's brilliant, Janet. For yourself, was there a particular point uh, that kind of most resonated with you? I'm always interested to hear. You know, some people, oh, was it the mindset thing? I had never heard of that before in my life, and someone else might be the the raising finance because they just don't understand how to get targeted, how to get started. Sorry. And then for other people, it's like, no, 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 it's, it's the property angle. I, I didn't understand how you could find them and how you could find deals. That was the thing for me. What was it for Janet? Well, for me, I mean, I, I sort of second what um, Simon had said there about Leslie. That was one of the standouts for me. Um, his story was fantastic. Um, in terms of the content, it's so difficult to pick, Richard, because, you know, you kind of thought, this is as good as it gets, you know what I mean? And then something else you were told or learned something different. For me, I think the key thing was potentially around raising the finance um, because actually I went into the course with a particular sort of idea about maybe the strategy that I was going to take to move forward in property. And to be honest, that has really brought me right back um, and is making me reevaluate which is going to be the best route for me to take. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know there are just so many different ways and I think you know if if people like they could probably sit down and research it and read about it and read this and listen to that podcast and you know somebody else has got a conflicting idea about something else um you guys bring it all together you kind of been there done that bought the t-shirt um you know, the t-shirt, ups and downs. And I suppose the key thing really is for me, you know, I kept sort of, it was like a mantra on the way home as I was sort of heading to the airport and sitting on the plane, just trying to catch my breath, was (laughs) follow the process. Mm. That was, you know, um, the experience is there. um, And, you know, just sit down, have your plan. think about what it is that you're going to do and kind of move forward from that. Mm, fantastic. Excellent. Appreciate that. This is, I do I honestly love this stuff because when, when I'm working there with the team and with you as great guys and girls, I'm too much into it. But we're too much, right, we need to give them this and then, okay, the next session is such and such and set up the slides and who's the next guest speaker. You don't get too much of a time to just sit and watch and see who's liking this bit and who's tuning into that bit. So I love this opportunity to be able to hear it afterwards. You know, it really is a debrief, so I absolutely love that. And for Mark, sorry, on you go, Janet. I was just going to say, Richard, I have to say that maybe if you were going to ask me one of my least favourite parts, oh, oh. oh, 
was the old, and listen, this is where probably people got the, the most benefit, was the comfort zone scenario. Right. You were very fond of going around and kind of putting your hand on someone and getting them up and putting them out of their comfort zone. And some people may not have really been in that situation before, but that was absolutely vital as well. So yeah, maybe that actually was one of my favorite parts, really. Oh, brilliant. I'm glad to hear that. Fantastic. See, I knew you would come round. You would take <laughs> me first, and then you would come round. <laughs> in fact, we'll, we'll be jumping on to Kerry to ask her about her experience. But before that, Martin, you touched upon the fact that uh, in your background, you've had uh, the finance aspect, you know, the finance training and so on. Did that help you or make it easier when it was the number crunching, it was the due diligence, the reforms, or did you still have a bit of challenge with that? How, how did you find that part of the puzzle? Um, to be honest, Richard, I wasn't too concerned about that area, uh, mm -hmm. coming from a finance background. Um, yeah. So I, I worked in the groups, um, and we worked with the case study that, that Sean had created, and um, you know, it, it, I didn't find that too difficult as such. Yeah, um, I think it very easily. Yeah, I think, I think the course has taught us how to systematically do things in the right order. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, so the financial side, in terms of crunching the numbers, um, yeah. that didn't phase me too much. Um, there was obviously other areas that were more of a challenge for me, such as, you know, stepping out of my comfort zone, yeah. as Janet rightly said. Um, you know, coming up with a, an elevator pitch was... was was a challenge, you know, right. uh, being taught about social media uh, and using that as a tool for yeah. your business. Uh, would I would class as a challenge because I was totally, you know, anti social media. You know, <laughs> I was totally against it until I discovered um, the five day webinar that Paul and Billy did. Um, right. And it was after that moment that um, I joined LinkedIn and started wow. creating a network. Interesting. Um, so that's, that's the LinkedIn Inferno stuff, any. was it? Yep. Right. Before that, I didn't entertain social media whatsoever. Really? Um, yeah. yeah. But then that can open your eyes. You've see, seen the value yeah. of it in today's modern world and so on. Yeah. Obviously, to use it properly, that is. We don't want uh, Martin running about taking photographs of his dinner and <laughs> putting them on Instagram and stuff. <laughs> no, 100%. Um, it opened my eyes uh, completely. Um, I could see how. It would be beneficial, uh, mm -hmm. certainly, you know, with with uh, looking to to develop further and invest in property and um, and you know create a business mm -hmm. um, in property. I could see the beneficial use of that. Um, so I was more than happy to step out, step outside the comfort zone and, and start you know making moves. Even today, for example, I I posted my very first LinkedIn uh, message. Never, never done it before. Um, Fantastic. Didn't even know how to go about doing it, really, uh, until I put one out there. I think it was about 11 o'clock today. Right. So, um, so, yeah, progress and little steps like that, you know, and, and keeping it. the momentum going. Um, uh, it, it, it's it's mind-blowing. The whole, the whole experience has been amazing. That's fantastic. Well, if we, if we get your uh, LinkedIn profile in the show notes, uh, then the listeners can certainly reach out to you. Uh, they know who you are and where you are, what you're up to, so that would be fantastic. So, Kerry, sure. comfort stretcher. Comfort stretcher. Talk to us. I was, uh, I was having a bit of fun with you as the uh, build-up to the event happened. I kept saying, I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. And sure enough, you were the first person dragged to the front of the room, weren't you? But you're still talking to me. I know, I know. It's, it, it's, um, it was one of those. And even though you'd built me up, I thought, no, you won't do it really. <laughs> so I sat there thinking, no, you won't do it really. And then the hand on the shoulder, I'm like, really? Really? <laughs> but do you know what? Like, mirroring what Janet said, it is one of those, oh, please don't do this to me moments. But it's also one of those, I've done that now. Next time it won't be so bad. And yeah. it's that, you know, you, you just do it, get out of your comfort zone, and that becomes the new normal. And you build on, and you build on, and you build on. So, yeah, it was, um, and again, like, around the table when we were talking about other stuff, and he came to me again, I was, for a second, I was, like, frozen, even oh. though I knew the answers to what you're asking. It's just that, and it is, it's like that push, push, and push. Yeah. And, and it is amazing, once you do it, you just move on and up. And it, yeah. it's like you look back at it and you think, well, I could put me back in that room next week, Richard, and I'll stand there and, Talk for England, you won't shut me up. Brilliant, 
brilliant. Yeah, I like the way you put that, actually, talking about the new norm. That's a, that's a great way of putting it. I've heard people describing a plateau, you know, I'm on this plateau, and then you, you push me up to try something else, and then that was my new plateau, and then you push me up on this. So that, that's a nice way, my, the new norm. Excellent. So apart from that, uh, was there any other particular parts of the course that most resonated with you or most helped you or most challenged with you, you know, anything you want to jump into? Yeah, I think um, from one of the most challenging bits for me were, was the numbers part. I'm used to working with numbers, but when I looked at doing it differently, all of a sudden I was like back at school and I thought, oh, I can't do this, I can't do it. And then last few days and now I'm doing it and doing it, it's clicked, it's there. But it's like that, again, it's out of your comfort zone, I guess. You, you, use, you think, oh, I can do this, I work with numbers, but somebody puts something different in front of you and you're like, oh, what's this? Yeah. So, but I, I think a real... Uh, the, the biggest eye opener for me was the amount of different ways that you can structure a deal. Right. It was. I mean, my, my one of my concerns was living in the Leicestershire area. The, the, you know, there is a big population. There's a lot of people that are in property. I'm thinking, Ooh, will I be able to get the deals? But after listening to Paul and he's talking about the low fruit, mm -hmm. well, that's the, that's where I'm at at the minute, and I'm I'm picking them off. And it's and it's that little lesson that was, you know, had I not gone the, to property protege, I wouldn't have known that. And mm -hmm. so that was. A really big insight for me. Fantastic, good stuff. And David, for yourself, so I touched upon how unique you were within that particular group. David's been there, but it's his second time. So why would you do that? And what did you experience by doing that? So for myself, Richard, it was, um, I kind of, I think I underestimated how much effort I would have had to put in to get it off the ground. Um, it was one of the ones that was like, what I experienced the second time round was watching people sitting there when Paul's explaining, Billy's explaining stuff, just you can see it, their mind is absolutely blown by the techniques because most people just think it's bite your flips and bite your lips and then they're sitting, you're just sitting there like, you can't even grasp, you're just going, wow. So the second time, it's like I was able to, I was kind of detached from that because my mind wasn't so much blown this time, it was more, right, I get it, I understand. So when people were trying to figure certain things out, 70% of it had already kind of grasped. So I was able to focus more on like the actual, the end part of the numbers to show it to the investor and like the mandates and stuff like that, how to structure that. It was just, I was able to focus more on certain, rather than just being in awe. It was, it was, and then Billy had said something that ran through, how you do anything is how you do everything. Yes. That was, I thought to myself, that's, if you're constant, if you're, if you're not putting, a lot of effort in and actually it's like I realise how much um, effort it took to get to a certain position in the railway and it's like I don't know why I would think that I don't even know why I didn't grasp but they would be the same with property it would be the exact same <laughs> you need to put in a lot of effort to get it off the ground and then it's just kind of navigating so the effort I had to put in at the start in my own career is like no as much now and then mm -hmm. if, I'd, if I'd put as much effort into properties I have with the railway man, I would probably <laughs> have a seat at the table where you're selling <laughs> Paul and Billy. I like it. I like it. Yeah, how you do anything is how you do everything. A famous T. Harvey Eker quote that we, that we like to live by. That's a, that's a brilliant one to pull back out the bag, David. Definitely, it's spot on. Um, and I've kind of went back to the systems and schedule stuff. I was just, see, before I was kind of winging it. I was just a wee bit, when I've got a wee bit of time all day and it's like, no, this really needs to be structured here. This is a second day business. It's like, see if you treat this as a hobby, you'll get hobby results. Yes. Yeah. Like it needs to be, you, what you put in is what you get back. No, I mean, it's like, yeah. I don't know why I had any other grasp. This time it's been, it's really a fun days. It was like, instead of being that kind of airy fairy when I came out on the Monday after the first time I was a wee bit thinking that I was going to check my bank in a week and it was going to be 50 grand there you know what I mean it was like I don't know I was in a kind of weird mind space this time it's like I've been more grounded and gone right there's a lot of action that needs to be put in here Just, right so I went back um, with the right stuff uh, the the email stuff the mm -hmm. setting up the schedules and stuff like that. I've turned all my notifications off and stuff all right, all these wee simple things, just getting them done, getting them ticked off. Stuff out to let me, to let me kind of process stuff a lot better because I get distracted very easily. Mm -hmm. my, you'll see it, I constantly look when I'm trying to talk. <laughs> the problem that I have, um, so that was probably my insight. Yeah, tremendous. No, that's good. I also like the, the, the kind of honesty, the basic, ah, you've got to bloody work. 
Aye, there is no there is no magic pill. It's not that I we're going to bring people into uh, the PMW property protege, and then see when they get back out on the Monday, just as you said, there'll be fifty grand in your account. Aye, of course it's not. You know, any course or any training person that's trying to guarantee that for you is just talking rubbish. You're right. I like that. I like that honesty, that total rawness. Uh, Janet, back to yourself. Was it, what was the kind of most fun you had? Did you have fun, in fact? Because I hope you did, as well as being interested in stuff. But did you have fun? I absolutely did, Richard. Um, I think it's like anything, you're going into a sort of a new environment and, and meeting new people. And there was a massive cross section of people there at different stages in their life um, that potentially wanted different outcomes, etc. And I think one of the, I suppose, the most fun things for me is really, if you like, the group of people that were brought mm. together because. Um, you could see that there was like a genuine desire for everyone to sort of succeed. Um, and I can even see, you know, already that there's probably some opportunities within the group as well to have joint ventures. Um, you know, even we're having fun still, um, even though we're working hard on the kind of the Facebook um, support group. Um, you know, people are sharing ideas books, reading, um, you know, asking for advice and things. And you guys brought us out one night for a, a lovely meal. It was nice to kind of break the ice and yeah. get to know people a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that was enjoyable for me. Ah, good stuff. That's excellent. Yeah, we definitely like to kind of try and foster that, that, the tribe, the family, the group, whatever you want to call it. Because, yeah, there's too, there's too much of that in the business world, I think, where, you know, people come together and around the conference table or a company meeting, but they're all there for themselves. You know, it's all take, 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 and oh, I'm, going to up, I'm going to upstage them and I'm going to be better than so-and-so and the CEO is going to like me better today. And... There's, there's just no need for it. There's no need for that kind of behaviour or ethics or morals. You know, let's, why, why can't we all win? Why can't we help each other? You know, because we're all looking for different things anyway. And that's what we found in the room. There's people who, no, no, I'm going down this route. I'm doing the property trading. And no, no, I'm over here. I've already got maybe two bite of lettuce and I want 20, 50, 70. Cool, you do that. I'm over here and I'm just looking for a wee bit of cash flow. I'm over here. I'm wanting a big pot at the, the end of my, my working life for my family. Whatever it is. Uh, and we can definitely, it's not as if we're, we're stealing from each other, you know, so why have that? Why have that mentality? So that's, that's great you picked up on that. I love that. Simon, see for yourself, what would you, if I say to you, surprising, what was the, the most surprising thing you learned or went through or heard or whatever? Would that word trigger something in particular for you? Yeah, so many different strategies. So many different strategies. Strategies, and then, right, okay. The different ways that you can work in property. Is yes. that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. So like David touched on it that, you know, just a simple buy to flip or a buy to let is pretty much the ceiling on 99% of the people I've spoken to in terms of their property knowledge. Even if they've got five or 10 properties, they don't really think outside the box and then step outside that box again. And uh, I think the stuff that Paul was sharing and Billy and Sean and yourself, it, it, it makes you look at things from a different light and from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And then the mindset is something that I'm, I'm, I'm always very conscious about, but Billy really drives it home just how important it is. And yeah, some of the stuff that he came out with is just so simple and common sense, but you still overlook it. And it just gives you that kick to you know refocus yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but how the two of them merge together, if you don't really focus on it, you can be caught out. And I think going into it, I always kind of had the mindset that I'm going to learn about the property strategies. And then I was surprised about how much the mindset really plays into those. And if you have one without the other, hmm. really haven't got anything. Yeah. And they're both as important as one another to get the results. Mm, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's a very good insight. And as you're right, it's something we constantly went back to all the time. You know, and that's as you said, that's why Billy opened the entire thing with that because that's what it's all about. And it doesn't matter what your business is. It doesn't matter if it's property or the railway with David. Anything. Uh, if the mindset's wrong, then you're going to come off track. If the mindset's right, you'll succeed at anything. No, that's yeah. brilliant. And Martin, for yourself, let's dig into some of these experiences because you touched on uh, the elevator pitch earlier, uh, but the listeners would not know we do some really intense stuff. For example, the, uh, the intensive networking, the two lines of chairs that we went through, uh, and then, of course, the negotiating, the role plays and stuff. How did you find them? 
Um, I found them challenging, uh, mm -hmm. but also um, fun and interesting at the same time. Um, what I noticed is certainly when we were doing like moving from chair to chair uh, and practicing an elevator pitch um, with the various different um, people that joined the course. Um, as as you went, as uh, every time you did one, you did you moved on from doing one to two to three to four. Your pitch became to get better, uh, more detailed, more perfected. Um, and by the last time I was doing it, maybe the eighth time, um, I had the same uh, pitch just rolling off my tongue. Uh, <laughs> I, I kind of gained that. The more you practice it, the better you become, um, yeah. and it becomes far easier to 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 become vocal about it as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That's good. That's good to hear. And Kerry, my goodness, we were, uh, we were talking about you today, young lady. How dare you? Uh, you've only just finished Protégé and you're off, you're off and running, you're off and flying, causing all sorts of trouble and stramash in the world. Explain to us, let the listeners know what you've already been up to. Obviously, we don't want to share any confidential information with people you're yeah. connecting with, but just in general, what on earth have you been up to on week one? <laughs> I know it's quite it's quite um it's quite scary. So so I actually put an offer in on the property while I was at Protege. Um because my head was like bursting. I woke up at 4 30 in the morning. And I thought, you know what, that deal that I was looking at before I came away is a deal. Don't mess about, go in and do it. That one didn't come off, but since coming home, um I've got three properties to view uh, at the end of the week, but I've also put like a a, a test um into Oh, last week, Kerry, you back there, oh, Kerry? Is that you? That you got that shoot? We just, Sorry. just lost you for a week. So I also put a test um, um, post on a property sourcing website on the back of the three properties that I'm going to view, and I've already had um, since since eleven o'clock last night. I've now got thirty five inquiries. I've got. Um, 12 i think it's 12 now stroke 13 inbox messages i've got so many people want these deals and i've not even actually bought the house yet <laughs> but i've started to build up my um investor database and i've contacted everybody back this afternoon to ask them what they're looking for you know what they've got to invest x y and z so i'm almost interviewing them before i actually go and view the properties on friday so i know what i'm prepared to go in at and what yeah. they've got to bring in so yeah so it's all That's a bit crazy it's all, yeah. all systems go exactly but it, sound, it also sounds as if you've got a, you've got a clear path in mind you've been you know the likes of paul has Absolutely. been showing you know, this is what you, you don't just go out and just ask somebody for money for crying out loud you need to be there for the investor and you know treat yeah. them your client and what are they looking for qualify them find exactly what it is they need uh, and then you know you can find the deal to match that that's that's tremendous. Now, I think that's a really important. Sorry, Kerry. Yeah. I thought the back of Paul was telling us about qualifying the the lead and everything, and that's why instead of just saying, getting really excited and saying, "Oh yes, yes, I've got," I'm like, I'm putting it back to them. What is it you're looking for? What have you got to invest? And you know, I've got so many people that want these particular deals that I'm potentially going to be um, putting offers in on Friday. I'm thinking, well, Paul's given me the confidence to not just like get overexcited and just think, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah everybody wants my deals." It's like, yeah. what have you got? Well, again, qualifying qualifying the investor and making yeah. sure they are what what I'm looking for as well, and not just what I've got to offer for them. Exactly. And Paul's that that method and that you know that experience to do that. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic, fantastic. Now, David, I'm going to go around the houses and ask people what the future is. What strategies they are kind of keen to follow on? Because we, we spoke about it, property is just a gigantic industry, gigantic field, uh, and we can pick and choose, you know, what we fancy doing. But so, so I want to ask, and you'll lead the way, I want to ask two things. One, what is that path, do you think, at, at least at the start, I'm going to concentrate on this process? And number two, the real question is the why. Why are you doing what you are doing? Why are you trying to succeed? Why are you trying to grow a business? Why are you trying to generate wealth for you and whoever else? Uh, for yourself, obviously, you touched upon the fact about the, the kind of lifestyle you have at the moment. You've got this really enjoyable job, but there's these things wrapped around it. You know, it's really critical to your time and your health and shifts changing and that kind of stuff. Is it maybe as simple as that or is there more to it? So what's the two kind of things that you would touch on with those questions? So I'll touch on the strategies 
for myself it would be um, off mute, um, for myself it would be property trading first would be just because of my time um, the time I've invested into my, my own career it's like I don't want to just leave it where it is so I'm trying to juggle both as it stands to see where it takes me so I feel that that and maybe assisted sales would be the would probably be the the easiest route for myself to bring in the cash flow and stuff like that to then allow me to do other stuff. But then I realised that I felt as if I was cutting myself off before. It was like it was either one or the other. I couldn't have both. So I think it, on the first protege, it was like I kind of made it. It was like I was buying into Billy. I think with the burn the ships. It was like right, this is it, man. It was. But I think I, I think I was a bit close-minded there because there's a lot of investors, there's a lot of people in the railway. Um, and just talking to people, it's like you don't realise. Um, I was talking to a boy in the office and he's got one buy to let and he's in the process of buying another. And it's like, see, as soon as I started questioning him on it, I didn't even deliberately do it because he, he bought a new motor. It's um, He bought a new car and we just joked. I said, you've got too much money. And he said, oh, that's investments in property. That's what he said to me. So then I just, I couldn't help but just, pry and ask a couple of questions and honestly he really didn't know much about his um the purchases that he made he really didn't know it was like i asked him about what kind of below market value did you get it didn't know what that was I said what well, even a discount did you get it it was like five grand off and i said how much was the refurb and he was like, oh it was walking condition i'm just sitting there going wow man he really just doesn't know and it's like i'm sitting there thinking i don't know anything but really to the other it's like you don't realize how much you know until you talk to somebody I think that was, um, and the reason for for myself, if I'm honest, I've, I've been through a kind of a bit of a troubled background. Um, mm-hmm. So I've always had issues with, with that kind of stuff. Um, had a lot of trouble in my younger years and stuff, um, through upbringing and stuff. So for, I'm trying not to repeat the cycle, I'm trying to break that, the mindset stuff, because it can really have a, a knock on effect. Um, if your mindset's limited, it's like, my family, I love them dearly, but some of their mindsets are really, really low. And it's just like all the stuff we talk about, money goes to money and all that kind of stuff. And I just know that's not the case. I, I really do. I know that's not the case. I know that if I put in the hard work, then why should I, I have as much right to having wealth and happiness as, as anybody else in this world? So, mm. so I just know it's my mindset and hard work that's standing in the way. That's it. So mm. for me, that's it's trying to find the the bands, because I'm one of the people, once I get into something, I usually, it's trying to just go, right, I need today property, I need today railway, and I need today my family. I need to balance them all out, because if one, if they all don't work, if one doesn't work, they all don't work. Right. I mean, it's like, I end up all over the place, so I need to try and be more centred when it comes to everything as a whole. Mm-hmm. So I think that's when I'm interested in. Mm, that's fantastic, and, and I appreciate you being so open and honest about the, the background, the childhood, and stuff like that. That's, that's great to hear, and I'm quite sure there's loads of listeners that will definitely resonate with that. You know, they'll connect with that because uh, you know we've all got a all got a history. That's for sure. Uh, if I jump over to Martin, what's uh, what's the two answers for yourself then, sir? The path forward and the why behind it all. Okay, so certainly for me, uh, the path forward, um, I'm going to focus on just one goal at a time. Um, I want to master um, the strategy that I choose. Uh, For me, it will be trading properties. Uh, I'm going to focus on that first. I'm going to master it to 100% so I can do it without even needing to think about it. at that point, then I would like a cash flow stream coming into the business, um, and then I'll move on to my next strategy, um, which may be buy and flip. It may be assisted sales, you know, element of buy and flip. It, it might be uh, another area. Um, I'll make that decision once I'm in a position and I've got the first strategy down to a T and a team in place running it for me. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of the why. Um, it's a challenge for me, really. Um, I've kind of grown up um, with um, the mindset of putting everyone else before yourself. That's how I've, how I've, I've done things uh, since growing up. Um, I've got a wife and a daughter. 
Uh, I always put them before myself. I always, whatever we're doing, it's always whatever my choice or options are, I leave to last. I, I put them first all the time, or I do my best to do that. Um, but this is more a, more a goal and a challenge for me, really. I want to do it for them, but at the same time, I want to prove to myself that I can do this. Mm. Um, I know there's a lot of work involved, and I'm more than 100% capable and willing to do the graft to to achieve uh you know, ultimately, uh, a business that I've set up from from you know uh, the start, and that I've grown into uh, a successful business at that, and and to become more entrepreneurial. Yeah, and then get a real satisfaction from that. There, there seems to be a real personal connection with it. Yeah, you want this yep. success and wealth for those people that you love to bits, the the, the wife and the daughter. That's great, but there's a real personal no no. I'm going to do this. This is something I'm going to, but I like that. That's, that's a nice right. I've, always, I've always set myself challenges and goals in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've not failed at any of those or achieving any of those uh, goals in the past. Even some have been like you, like even my wife, for example, getting married. We picked a hotel that my wife said to me on, on walking in to view the hotel, we can't afford this. And I made it happen. Yes. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't an issue for me, you know. I put in the graft and 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 made it happen. So this is just another challenge that I'm going to make happen. Brilliant! Oh, I love that. That's fighting talk, right, Simon? Come on, step up to the plate. You've heard the challenge for that warrior there in East Kilbride. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose my uh, my strategy going in was to do deal packaging, and that would leverage my past experience. Mm-hmm. I found that I had the, uh, I had the, I suppose the ability to to help buyers and sellers come together and, and kind of do that hand holding and, and managing the human side of it, but the property knowledge was the gap. Mm-hmm. So looking to fill that in, and then hopefully package something around that. But I have been influenced by Leslie, and this mm-hmm. week I've been trying to make some moves into looking at conversions. So. I have two six-bed properties I'm viewing on Friday uh, here in East London. One of them is 775, one of them is 950 uh, market value. And I had a call with a financier today who would happily loan 75% of the GDV with uh, obviously doing their own bit of due diligence. And the GDV we estimated in the area is around 1.3 to 1.5 million. Um, so obviously it was just an initial 45 minute call, but the appetite is there from their side. So it's just trying to structure all the numbers and a couple of the mortgage guys and IFAs in our company have put me on to a couple of their conveyance and solicitors and a couple of builders. Um, so I'm meeting a few people next week and a potential JV partner. So I've got this crazy ambition that I want to start doing some conversions <laughs> after seeing what, uh, after seeing what Leslie did. Um, so, you know, we'll see how that goes, but I think the deal packaging will be the bread and butter. I think that'll be where I'll focus most of my energy. Right. I've got the website been built and I have my strategy call on Friday with the guys to go through that and, and kind of get that up and running. But I don't want to wait three or four weeks until that's all up and running. I'm just throwing myself in head first now. Um, I suppose the reason why, if I look back when I left school when I was 15, I wasn't doing very well in school. Uh, you know, I thought it was always bright, but it just didn't suit me. Uh, and my mother got sick uh, when I was 15 and struggled for two years and passed away from lung cancer. So when I left school, I kind of started looking after her and doing all that sort of stuff. And I saw the ripple effect that had across my family. And she was only 44 when she got sick. And I think that kind of put a boost up me to get things moving and get things up and running. And then when I came to the UK five years ago, it was me and a couple of friends. And, you know, we had a few hundred quid and a place to stay for a couple of months. And we just made the most of it and went and, and we just started building it. So it's been a challenge personally. But I think what happened in my teenage years definitely put a, a kick up the arse, you know, to get things moving and get things going. And, you know, when you're told you can't do something, you just want to go at it and you just want to prove people wrong and, you know, prove to myself as well that I can do it. And, yeah, what I've done so far is only getting started, really. So now I just want to leverage it and bring it to the, bring it to the next step. That's fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. When you were talking there, actually, you, you reminded me quite a lot of Leslie because it was, it was that story of there's this, you know, hard, challenging, negative thing that happened in life uh, way back in your childhood and you had no control over it. And then it's the choice. It's that fork in the road. Okay, what are you going to do? 
Are you going to be defined by it and go down the way? Or are you going to take that as that kick, that realisation, that whatever you want to call it, and you're going to go the other fork in the road? No, 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 no. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use the power behind that to push me on. That is tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. Thanks so much for sharing that. So I've got two lovely ladies left. I've got two hands. Which shoulder will I touch? Oh, we're back in the room. It's the shoulder. Oh, it's going to be. Oh, we're going to Kerry. Kerry. Talk to us. Give us your two. What's the strategies? I mean, we've already touched upon some of the things that you're off and running with already. Uh, but if you want to enhance on that, what you've got in mind, and then the yeah. why. I guess my, my path forward is because I've burnt the, burnt the ships. I've done a billy. Rather than, getting the, rather than getting the three months behind me, I've burnt the ships. So, <laughs> so we're there. So because Paul and Billy have given us all of those strategies, I've not got one particular area that I'm focusing on. I've got a gold mine area right. and I now know I've, I've, I've you know, properly researched it. I know what each property sells for, what each property is worth, what each property will rent for. So I've got so many different strategies within. Mm-hmm. I've chosen a small area. Don't get me wrong. Just to get me started. Sure. But it's given me the, um, confident to be able to think well i can do this this or this with this house uh, or if this this and this doesn't work i can package this house so i've got you know the all of these strategies going on within a very small area and i guess my why um i can resonate with a lot of what simon said there at school i wasn't the particularly bright one my older brother was always the clever one and from my dad it was always oh you're never going to be as bright as your brother and i had that from the teachers as well you're never going to be as bright as your brother you know he's in set one for maths you're in set four and it kind of gave me that mindset that yeah yeah I'm not very clever and then all of a sudden in the adult life it was like do you know what I am clever I can do this and from then when I kind of changed that mindset that's when I you know ended up in you know very well-paid positions and doing great jobs and that's pushed me on to want to do more than just work for somebody else be the entrepreneur take on all these strategies and the sky's the limit, Richard. Fantastic. Fantastic. I love it. So, Janet, I kicked off first with you <laughs> and now we're ending the show with you. You have to bring the curtain down for us. Uh, I was building nope. up the tension for you, building up the pressure. You're well used to that in the protege room. <laughs> Over to you. Absolutely. Yes, Richard, I mean, for me, um, you know, the, the, the path that I had coming into college and the path that I have now is very different based on, on sort of the, the takeaways from all of the different strategies and learnings and support that we had. I kind of went in there thinking that I was going to, um, you know, build a by let portfolio and that was going to be a great way to sort of have that income coming in, etc. Um, and potentially do a few by the flips. Um, for me now going forward, um, I, I actually sort of think the deal packaging is, is going to be the way for, for me to really get um, to grips with the, the market and understanding that. Um, I do like challenging myself as well. So I'm, I'm currently looking at a sort of commercial to residential conversion um, and kind of doing a little bit of research into that at the moment. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I just think it's almost our, our duty to go out there and try and educate people about the, the opportunities that the property can present in their lives. And, you know, one of the reasons why I, I'm doing this is that I was kind of, I was sick of being sort of the passenger in somebody else's bus. And I want to be driving my own bus you know, in terms of and, and bringing my family and friends along with me and hopefully being able to kind of elevate and raise their wealth thermostat as well and open up their eyes to some of the kind of opportunities and potential um, that is out there. And if we can have a little bit of fun along the way, that would be great. Um, I, I, I can foresee that there will be challenges, but it's really just an opportunity to find a solution in my opinion, you know. And I know that with the support of the peer group that were there um, sort of at the four days along with some of the sort of pre-protege people that are sort of in the Facebook uh, Facebook group easy for me to say um, you know I, I, I you just feel like you're not alone you know mm. no man's an island do you know what yeah. I mean let's not try and make this too difficult um, somebody generally will have an answer that will be able to help you and, and I've seen that in evidence in myself already yeah 
Fantastic. There you go, Janet, the bus driver, the driver of the bus of fun, heading off into the future. Hopefully a Rolls in the, in the future, maybe. A Rolls, okay. A, an executive bus. <laughs> an executive coach designed by Rolls-Royce. <laughs> Carrying all our friends and family with her. That is fantastic. There you go, listeners. You've heard some, some from some outstanding people. Uh, and that's the privilege that I've got. Yes, they were kind and talking about the course and the team and stuff and the things that they enjoyed. But that, that's the real value for me. Uh, it's the other way. We get to work with these kind of people. They're so... Up for it, open, honest, charged, determined, dedicated, want to help each other. So the right reasons behind it. It's just it loves. I, I just love it. it. It lifts us up as a team as well at PMW. Absolutely love it. So for your time this evening, boys and girls, thanks an absolute million. Uh, I'm sure the listeners have enjoyed uh, checking in with you and hearing your stories and got a lot from it, a lot of connection with it. The, the beauty for me is I get to work with these people carrying on. It's not just an event. We've got the, the regular check-ins and calls and the groups and stuff. So we'll see where their journey goes. And who knows, they may get so scarily successful that it will have to be a, a one-on-one guest with me at some point in the future. We'll see there. But for all of you tonight, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Richard. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thanks, folks. All the best. Thanks, Richard. Bye. All the best, everybody. Hi, folks. It's Richard here again. I really hope that you enjoyed today's show. Now, listen, I've got two links to help support you on your property journey, and I want you to write these down when it's safe to do so. You might be driving in your car just now listening to the podcast, and that's fine, but please make sure that you get back to this and write down these links. Okay, are you ready? Got your pen in hand? So the first one, thisweekinproperty.com. Now that's the website for this podcast. On there, make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss out. What you can also do on there is catch up on tons and tons of past episodes. There are hours and hours of property-related content and some amazing guests with some fantastic insights to help you on your property journey. So that is this week in property.com. Okay, next link, propertyprotege.com. Now, let me spell that one out for you. P-R-O-P-E-R-T-Y, P-R-O-T-E-G-E. That's propertyprotege.com. Now, what's it all about? Well, the Property Protégé Intensive is designed to give you the lift that you need into the world of property. And if you've already started, if you've already got some experience, then this can help you accelerate your progress even further. The experiences that people have had at Protégé and the success that they've achieved afterwards has been life-changing for many people. So go there right now if you're serious about property and if you want to build a highly successful property business. That's propertyprotege.com. So there you go. That's two links to some fantastic resources that are going to help you. And listen, talking about help, can you help me to help other people? You see, the more that we can share this podcast then more people can learn from the fantastic guests that I've been so lucky to talk to. How can you help? Well, it's very simple and very quick. Just a short review on iTunes is going to help make that happen. If you go to thisweekinproperty.com forward slash iTunes, that will guide you to the very place that you will be able to help other people. So thank you. Thanks for doing that. And thanks for listening into the show. And I look forward to bringing another great guest to you in the next show.